Hello. Today we are interviewing Dr. Boris Altschuler, Professor in Theoretical Physics from Columbia University. Boris Altschuler, mm. welcome and thanks for being with us. Thank you for having me. Um, with the, the support of the Friends of École Polytechnique based in the US and uh, the Alliance program, we have the chance of having you on École Polytechnique campus for a few months as visiting professor from Columbia University. Uh, what does this stay in France bring to your research and why are such exchanges important? Well, uh, in uh, doing science, uh, exchanges are extremely important, uh, in spite of the fact that now we have uh, email, uh, Skype, whatever, still people have to be together and uh, this is the only way uh, really collaborate. And, uh, there are people uh, who can uh, do science uh, uh, alone. I'm not one of them. I really need uh, to uh, talk to people, to exchange ideas. And uh, uh, from uh, this point of view, uh, Paris in general, and the Cole Polytechnique in particular, is a great place because in one uh, place you have uh, many people who are doing uh, similar things and who have uh, something to teach you. So I, uh, it's by far not my first visit to France. I have been many times for uh, a month or even longer. Uh, I once organized a program in uh, Institute of uh, André Poincaré in uh, near Col Normal. Uh, so uh, I know uh, Paris and when I come, it is like uh, coming uh, home. But at the same time, intensity of collaboration is great and I always love to come. And I have to thank uh, Ecole Polytechnique and uh, also people from Colombia for establishing this great program. I think this kind of exchange uh, is uh, uh, really fantastic and very helpful. You are Russian. Uh, you came to the US where you've worked at the MIT in Princeton before joining Columbia University. You are now getting to know Ecole Polytechnique Research Center and in particular uh, the Center of Theoretical Physics. You know a lot of uh, higher ed and research education worldwide. What are the main strengths and specificities according to you? Well, uh, there are no two institutions that are completely alike. Uh, every institution has its own strengths and uh, weaknesses and uh, mostly it of course depends on uh, people. If uh, you have uh, you know a couple of strong people there is all potential for growing great group. As you know as we tell uh, first class people attract first class people and second class people attract third class people. So a uh, good place is uh, first of all a uh, place where there are many good people. But uh, at the same time, organization also matters. For, for instance, in uh, United States, usually university cannot afford having a large number of people in the same field. So you are basically surrounded by uh, younger uh, people, students, postdocs, and uh, maybe there is one or two other professors in, in the same field. In, uh, in uh, laboratories where I was working in Russia, it was different because uh, uh, the, uh, each uh, lab had, uh, was devoted to some particular uh, field and there were really many, like tens uh, of people with whom uh, I could uh, uh, discuss uh, uh, science professionally. And uh, this makes difference. I uh, really uh, like and need to have uh, uh, just many people, not uh, only my students. And uh, from this point of view, I think uh, French system is, uh, uh, is more beneficial for me. But uh, of course, there are uh, some uh, advantages of, and disadvantages of uh, any system. And it's great that we have, uh, that the world is big and we have all kinds of flowers flourishing. So, you have made uh, important and pioneering contributions to theoretical condensed matter physics, uh, in particular in developing uh, the notion uh, which is known as Anderson localization. Uh, in fact, you are coming to Ecole Polytechnique next month in April to give a series of lectures on that topic. Mm -hmm. 
Can you tell us a bit about it in simple words? <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, let me try. Uh, first of all, of course, it's not me, but Anderson, uh, Phil Anderson, who was for a long time my uh, colleague at Princeton and uh, one of the greatest minds alive. Uh, he, of course, invented it. But uh, maybe I will, instead of explaining uh, what Anderson localization is or uh, how it developed now, just tell what it is about. Uh, and uh, all this is about uh, properties of uh, uh, what we would call complex uh, quantum systems. So uh, we are speaking about systems uh, which are uh, much bigger and uh, than, for instance, atoms, which we can uh, understand uh, uh, quickly and uh, straightforwardly. But at the same time, they are uh, still uh, small enough uh, to, uh, uh, to still uh, have uh, phase coherence and all kinds of quantum phenomena uh, being there. So uh, it is kind of intermediate field between uh, the micro world uh, like atoms and smaller particles, and macro world, which is traditional condensed matter uh, physics doing. Some people call this field mesoscopic because of intermediate size. And it turns out that uh, there are very general properties that we yet have to uh, discover of these systems which distinguish them from both microscopic and macroscopic system. And uh, these uh, ideas that Anderson pioneered and we're trying to develop is just uh, uh, appropriate language to discuss these systems. I see. You have also developed a collaboration with the NEC uh, laboratories, mm -hmm. NEC being a Japanese IT company. Mm. At Ecole Polytechnique, we favor a lot of uh, fundamental research, but at the same time, strong cooperation with the industry. In your field, in your scientific field, uh, does cooperation with the industry, is it important? Does it matter? Yes. Uh, I think uh, there are two questions in one. Because uh, the lab that uh, NEC uh, organized in Princeton originally was built as a laboratory for fundamental research. We were not given any uh, tasks uh, in order to develop certain products. Uh, we were supposed to talk to people who are developing, but the, our main uh, uh, task was to do good fundamental research. And uh, so there is one question. Does uh, industrial, uh, big industrial companies, uh, do they need fundamental research or they can uh, leave it for uh, national labs or educational institutes? And uh, looking back, uh, when uh, there were uh, great labs like Bell Labs or IBM Research Center, my feeling is that they made uh, fantastic uh, uh, contribution both to fundamental science and people who were doing fundamental science there made a lot of contributions for the uh, companies. And uh, uh, I think the tendency in, uh, in physics is that uh, companies are not, uh, 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 not going to continue uh, too much of investments into fundamental science. And uh, this is unfortunate, but uh, this is as much as uh, we can do, because by doing that, they are kind of cutting uh, connection between uh, you know, fundamental science and applied science, and between applied science and uh, uh, real uh, development. On the other hand, what I observe now is that new companies like uh, Google or Facebook or Microsoft they are trying to uh, start their uh, research, which is more uh, between physics and computer science. But at the same time, they do uh, support uh, fundamental research, and it is uh, showing. So for instance, uh, I'm starting some collaboration with Google now, and I'm very happy with that. Finally, uh, do you have a piece of advice to give to Ecole Polytechnic students who consider doing a career in physics? Would you encourage them? My first advice would be uh, look inside yourself and decide, do you like doing science or not? And uh, if you uh, kind of uh, 
uh, not so much interested in doing science, better choose something else. Because uh, you can uh, be mediocre in many other fields and still be happy. You can, will not be happy being mediocre in, as a scientist. And second, if you uh, really feel that it is something that you want to do, work hard. In general, it is great uh, profession and great uh, uh, way uh, of uh, you know, spending uh, your life, provided that you are really getting fun from that. So, Dr. Boris Altshuler, thank you very much for being with us today. Thank you.